Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody is in the, entering the room at this time. We're going to let them do so. And uh, as they do so, we're going to ready ourselves. I want to kind of open with the reading of the scripture at this time. Uh, I think that's so appropriate that we can read the word of the Lord uh, as people enter the room, as we come together on this beautiful Mother's Day. What an appropriate scripture to read as everyone gathers in the room this morning. Uh, the Virtuous Woman, Proverbs chapter 31. As people are coming in the room, hear ye the word of the Lord this morning. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she, is, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, as he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Amen. The Virtuous Woman, a very popular scripture, not just uh, on today, on Mother's Day, but even as we celebrate women indeed. We join in together uh, on this day, and uh, everybody is coming uh, in the room as we uh, ready ourselves, as we gather to worship the Lord. And um, we understand that particularly here at New Life, as we uh, lift up this understanding, we uh, understand that we have shifted from gathering to connecting. And we are just so confident that we must connect. We're not able to gather. We're not, we're not gathering because of fear. We're gathering out of wisdom. Uh, we, are, we are not gathering out of wisdom. Uh, we're understanding that we believe that there is a larger picture here because we just don't want to gather as new life just for the sake of gathering, okay? We understand that our times say that God is in the midst of doing something special. And so this is why I'm calling us, I'm calling new life to a time of consecration. We must consecrate ourselves. Now, maybe you don't need it, but you know what? The more... I pray and I meditate and see God's face, the more I need it. I have some more consecrating to do, even in my life. And so while gathering is important and there'll be a time of that and we're going to have to be st strategic in how uh, we gather, we're going to have to take care of the vulnerable among us. Uh, I'm becoming closer and closer to the vulnerable age indeed, but uh, be that as it will or may, uh, we understand that our challenge as new life is to connect with one another. Others of you who are out there who are enjoying the word going forward, we're glad that you're connecting with us. But hear me, hear me. 
God is keeping his church. God is keeping new life. Understand that. We have not met since the middle of March. But hear me, God is keeping us. He's keeping his church. Be confident, fully persuaded that God has not just abandoned us, even into the wolves, to scatter us. As we're scattering, we are being prepared. We are being, uh, we are being trained. We are being admonished, even as we're scattering as the body of Christ. We must stay connected. That's why we do some things to really connect. The media ministry team, myself, we are really trying to connect with one another. It is of utmost importance that we join in this time of connecting. We believe that as we're connecting, we're creating revival. As we're measuring and owning up to what we need to be doing in our spiritual maturing, in our developing, that uh, we are creating revival. We're chasing God down. And so my admonition to the people of God is to consecrate yourselves. There are many who gathered in church and had uh, no relationship with Jesus Christ. And now we're not gathering. We're still not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we want that to be of utmost importance as we gather together to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so as you are preparing yourselves for, the, for another week of being scattered, consecrate yourselves. Focus in on the Lord. Renew yourselves. Check yourselves. Reset your lives in that that you are doing. Thanks be to God. God is working on many lives. He's working on many of you. I see it even from a distance. You think you're just being frustrated. You're thinking that some things are being uncovered and you're angry about this and angry. Hold it. God's working on you. God's working on you. He's just not going to let you sit there and just call time out and you sleep for eight weeks and then wake up. No, there is a better peace in that. There is a greater understanding in that. So consecrate yourselves even for our time uh, that when we do gather, necessary instructions will go forward. But even now, there's a time of equipping. Are you missing it? Are you missing the time of equipping? Stay tuned. Stay connected. You're going to be ready for what God is bringing. We're living in a chaotic time. You got to be connected to something. If not, you're going to be annihilated and destroyed. Be careful. Be careful. The prophetic word. Be careful. If you're not connected, you're not going to make it. You're not going to stand when things really, really get difficult. We're going to gather and we're going to prepare ourselves to worship the Lord in the word today. We want to pray together and uh, just give thanks unto God this beautiful day as we come together and uh, there are needs. We are so grateful even for uh, those who are on the front line battle, those medical staff, those scientists. Understand God is not afraid of coronavirus. God is not, a, not, not fearful of COVID-19. God could, in an instant, destroy COVID-19. That's why I say, as a people of faith, we got to tune into God. God is up to something. And so we are not fearful. God is not fearful of COVID-19. He could destroy it, but he's in the midst of orchestrating some things, setting some things up. Let's not miss that as we go into the presence of the Lord this morning. Let's pray together. Father, I give you thanks and praise once more. This is the day that you've made. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in this day. We gather to worship you. We gather to adore you. We are connecting together because you are that glue. You are that anchor. You are what holds us together. A man can't hold us together but you, O oh Lord, can hold us together. Even as I yield myself unto you in your presence, O oh Lord, I pray for those under the sound of my voice today. Minister into needs today, Lord God. You are still the Lord, our healer, and we're praying for health and healing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our elders uh, in our community of faith, our elders who are even 
tuning in with us in this streaming uh, broadcast, Lord God. Uh, we pray, Lord God, that their wisdom would speak unto us. Keep them strong, Lord God. Uh, we gather because it's a great family day today. We pray for family. By our design, Lord God, our desire is to see your design for family. May families be strengthened as we unite ourselves together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let the people of God say amen. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. God is good. And all the time... God is good. Thanks be unto the Lord today. Well, it's Mother's Day, uh, just an awesome day on the calendar indeed, and I uh, want to draw your attention into a passage of scripture, probably my favorite mother's scripture, probably my favorite, favorite family scripture, generational scripture, as the Apostle Paul writes to a young pastor by the name of Timothy, Pastor Timothy. And um, uh, verses, the, the second Timothy chapter one, verses three through seven, hear the reading of the word of the Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day. I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, uh, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit, for the spirit God gave us does not, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. Happy Mother's Day once more to all of our mothers that are tuned in today. And even as there are those of you who uh, either because of the stay at home uh, edict that is going forth, you're not able to be with your mothers or like many of us, our mothers have gone on to their eternal rewards. And we just join in together to celebrate, to remember to cherish the wonderful gifts my brothers and I have been communicating this morning about the wonderful gift that God gave us even in our mother and celebrating who she is and how she represented some standards that God has for mothers and for the families today. That's what I want to talk to us about for a few moments today as we celebrate those who are among us who are mothers and to know that there are some true and abiding standards that God has for mothers. You know, God has a design for creation, uh, not just for mothers, but a design for all of creation. And just like COVID-19 can disrupt creation, understand that that's just a, a vortex of what sin does. Sin disrupts creation and sin has disrupted the creation that God has ordained as family, family. You know, rightfully so, churches are rustling. We got to meet together. We got to get together. But you know, God's first institution was not the church. It's the family. And how much am I hearing for families to come together, for families to lay down whatever divisive things that are in them and come together? Come on now. Churches are rustling. What's the message for families even in this. And so we celebrate mothers, we celebrate fathers, we celebrate children, because all of that goes to make up families. We're concerned about the job that mothers are called to do. And we believe that, 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 that uh, the, 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 the calling for mothers, that God's word lifts up a standard for our mothers, a standard for them to, to, to look at, a vision for the home. And that's what we want to lift up. Uh, we can lift up the word. We pray that even our time together is anointed. And as this time is anointed, may there be a vision that's caught with families. May there be an inspiration to know that with God's help, families can be strengthened. Mothers can be supported in ways that you would have not thought possible indeed. And so our calling, even as a ministry, as a body of Christ, our vision is to partner 
in creating an empowering community, creating a nurturing community that at its backbone would be strong families, strong families. That's the calling, the calling that God has for us. And so our focus in uh, today's text of scripture is probably found someplace in between verse 5. Uh, that we lift up. Verse 5, as, as Apostle Paul writes, I'm reminded, uh, Timothy, of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and is in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded also lives in you. There's a generational thing that's going on here. And even as this word goes out to the generations that are assembled, that are gathered for the urgency of this time, the urgency of this season of consecration, the urgency of the calling of the people of God. The Apostle Paul is encouraging young Timothy, uh, this pastor, he's giving him words of encouragement. His assignment is great in shepherding and leading a flock. Uh, the assignment is there, and we see no doubt that Pastor Timothy is a gifted young man. He's been trained and he's on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Surely any mother would be proud to have a son like Timothy here, a son that has forsaken the world system, a son that has forsaken so-called gang life, a son that has forsaken uh, some of whatever is new and hip hop and whatever you feel like, a son that's forsaking uh, the establishment of families and having babies here and babies there and babies there. Oh, any mother would be proud of Timothy. Timothy, who the Apostle Paul uh, trained and uh, had received his calling that even from a young man, He's called and accepted to lead the flock of God, to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Any mother, any grandmother would be proud to have Timothy as their offspring. What a wonderful norm that would be. Mothers proud of their children. Grandmothers proud of their grandchildren. Oh, we know that the love is there but proud in the way how their children turned out. But I, I want us to be reminded that because of the standards that God gives, things, people like Timothy coming about, it didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen just by chance, just by a flipping of the coin. But there was some intentionality that was given unto the life of Timothy. And so in between these lines in verse 5 and in the life of young Timothy, I see that there are some traits. There are some traits that resided in uh, Timothy's mother and no doubt resided in his grandmother Lois. And I want to lift up and to highlight some of these standards, uh, even as we want to continue to e equip, to inspire, to bless, to challenge, to admonish and celebrate mothers. We have a word as we want to remind you of standards, biblical standards that will bring about a transformation. You know, as this world is in this midst of this comma, this COVID-19 comma, uh, it's a tough world out there. It's a difficult world out there. And we don't need family members just running to the, the winds all wild, no guidance, no direction, no backbone in their lives. And so they try to get what they can get as they can get. There, there's, a, there's a more excellent way here. And so hear me as we lift up some standards that we see uh, in Timothy's mother. The first standard that I see in, 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 in Eunice, Timothy's mother, is that she was a believing mother. No doubt, she was a believing mother. What an awesome standard for mothers. Mothers who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior blows me away. What an awesome standard to have mothers who have arisen and said, I have decided to follow Jesus. What an awesome standard that is. Mothers who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and who are living in faith by the word of God. 
I mean, mothers who are able to instruct their children in the word of God, not mothers who say, you better do right now, you better do right now, or I'm going to whip your behind. Hold it, there's something behind that. Have children been trained in the word of God? Have children been, been ministered to by a mother who is a believer? Oh, what an awesome, awesome standard it is. Mothers, you owe your children to be saved. You owe your children to know Jesus Christ. Look at the world that we're giving our children now. Corona, co co coronavirus world. That's what we're giving our children we owe it to our children to give them lives as mothers, sisters, mentors. Uh, we owe it to, to give them Jesus Christ, to model Jesus Christ. We owe it to our children. And obviously, obviously Eunice, Timothy's mother, was a believer. Second thing that we can see as a standard, not just a believing mother, but a spiritually maturing mother. Not one who says that I'm a member of a church, pastor so-and-so is my pastor, I've been baptized. But one of the standards that we see in God's word that obviously we see lived out from generation from Lois to Eunice to Timothy was that there was a sense of maturing spiritually. What was being passed down to Timothy was not stuff from an immature woman, an immature mother, spiritually, hear me, Eunice was able to pass down a maturing faith, not a faith that was filled with holes of unfaithfulness, holes of sometimes up and sometimes down, but one that there was a maturing spiritual component to a mother's life, a mother's, a mother's character who is growing a character that's shaped and formed after Jesus Christ. That's a spiritually maturing woman. A maturing mother spiritually gives their children the, the modeling of rising above bad habits. Again, spiritually maturing, rising above bad habits, rising above bad tongues and bad conversations. That's the standard a standard that mothers are not holding on to bad habits, but your children can see you maturing, can see you growing. Come on now, don't, don't, don't leave me now. Don't leave me now. This is a standard that will change the post-coronavirus world as never before. A third standard that we see lived out in uh, Timothy's foundational background, his mother and his grandmother. We see that there was a believing mother, spiritually maturing mother. There was a praying mother. Oh, my mother prayed for me, had me on my mind, took the time and prayed for me. All oh, that song that we like to sing. And many of us can attest to the power of a praying mother. Oh, that's a standard. That's a standard for the family, a standard for the home. A mother who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see that there can be children who are raised to follow Jesus, who are raised with a lot of prayer. Prayer is about coming into agreement with what God has said, coming into agreement with what God's will is. And a mother who prays for her children is a special mother indeed. What a wonderful standard. Mothers can pray for their children. They can pray their children through difficult seasons. They can pray their children even out of hell. They can pray their children through struggles. A praying mother rises early in the morning and prays for her children, calls them by name, calls and gives God permission to have his way in their lives. A praying mother, a praying mother stays up late praying for her children. What a wonderful standard that we see there. And with the stuff children face today, they don't stand a chance without a praying mother. Hear me, hear me. They don't stand a chance without a praying mother. Mothers, pray for your children. There's so much uncertainty of what will unfold even after everything begins to end from the lockdown. Mothers, pray for your children. Cover them. Be a hedge. Because it, it's a tough world, a difficult world. Love your children by praying for them. 
praying mother. A fourth standard that we see in the life of Timothy's mother, his grandmother, is that there was a visionary mother. Visionary mother. Proverbs 29 says, where there is no vision, people perish. People cast off restraints. People do whatever they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. We can see even in scripture, the Old Testament, there were some mothers who had visions for their children. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, had a vision for her son, not to give her son over to slavery, not to give her son over to, 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 to instant death. And even as she cradled her son, even on that Nile River in protecting him, it was because she had a vision for her son. Again, we see Hannah in the Old Testament had a vision for her son Samuel, knowing that, that Samuel was a gift to her. And so her vision was releasing Samuel back into the temple. Samuel, serve the Lord all the days of your life. I've made a covenant with God. He's giving you me, and I'm giving you back unto God. A visionary mother. Mothers who would give their children back over to, to God. Mothers, think about who children are giving over to. We're giving our children back into the streets. We're giving our children into gangs. We're giving our children into, into to messed up homes. We're giving our children into so much. <laughs> Let's give our children back to God. Have that vision. And apparently Eunice had that vision for her son, Timothy, and instilled in him the, the necessary faith in his life. Therefore, mothers have a vision for your children. Have your vision for them. Not that your children are better than anybody else's children. That's not what the vision is. They're not any better than somebody else's children. The vision is about what's in that child. What's in that child can be released and that they can live out purpose and meaning and not just be, be giving out into the wolves and destroyed by the savages that are out there, by the wickedness, the wicked schemes of life, the wicked schemes that take away health, those habits that take away health. Again, we give a faith, teaching our children how to deal with stress, how to deal with pressures. pressures. Life isn't fair. We don't have to take on some of those uh, sideways of doing and handling depression and stress that are unhealthy for us? A vision, a vision. And even as we tie some things together, as we lift up God's standards for mothers, a believing mother, a spiritual and maturing mother, a praying mother, a visionary mother, and I close with this one, a wise mother, a wise mother. Wisdom is knowing what to do with what you know. Wisdom, wisdom. Foolish mother, those two concepts should not even go together. Don't even match oil and water. But wisdom and mothers should go hand in hand, glove in hand. Mothers know what to do with the culture that our children are being raised in. A culture, the acceptable behavioral standards, what's being presented unto our children. Know what to do with the culture. See, we must study the world in which our children live in, not just throw them out, but study the world. Study what's being handed unto them. Study what the media is giving unto them. Study what the educational system is giving unto them. Study what's giving unto them. Study wisdom. Be wise. As you raise your children, be wise. Motherhood is a, it's not just a full-time job. It's time and a half. It's double time. It's overtime. It's all of that. But fear not. God helps you. Be wise. Be wise. Don't just release our children into this culture. Question the culture. Study the culture. Build a plan for our children that's based on the word of God. Our children don't have to have everything that somebody else's children has. Study the culture. Our children don't have to have the latest music that everybody else has. Come on, study the culture. What's being handed down to our children? Would it produce lives like Timothy? Study the culture. 
Just because everybody else is doing it, everybody else's kid is doing it, it doesn't mean that you have to do it. God can give you awesome wisdom. Scripture says, ask him. Ask him for wisdom. Raise your children on Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you, not to hurt you, but again, to give you that hope and that future. Be wise. Be wise. Just don't give your children something that they can get out of your hair that you can have time to unwind. Study. Study. Be Use wisdom indeed. We close with the question, now what? What do we do with what we have? Understand that mothers are still in God's order. Motherhood is still in God's order. Understand that, that it's not something that's out of order. Motherhood is God's order. And those of you who are mothers, I encourage you to pray without ceasing. Cry on the, or, or call on the name of the Lord. Cry out to him. Know that we are a praying people. Lean on God's strength. Lean on God's anointing. Don't quit. God is not a God of shame. Sometimes uh, we make it to this particular point and we made it without God. But understand, God's not a God of shame. He knows exactly where you've been. He knows the missteps, the mistakes. He knows the lack of guidance you received. He knows even of the rebellion you gave. But understand, God is not a God of shame. So don't come to God today shamed and embarrassed. Oh, no. Just come broken unto the Lord. He'll put you back together again. I want to pray with you today. And even as we pray, we're going to believe that God is going to strengthen you as you move forward in fulfilling your responsibilities. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the blessings of the day. We thank you, Lord God, just for an amazing time together, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we celebrate you now. We pray for mothers. Bless our mothers. Help them strengthen them, be merciful unto them. Give them a fresh anointing, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May families be strengthened as we move forward, preparing ourselves for a post-COVID-19 world. <laughs> you are the Lord, our shepherd. You've already been there to a post-COVID-19, just like you are here with us today. Help us, bless us, and strengthen us is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Friends, the Lord bless you. Mothers, enjoy today. I love you. Understand that this is simply a time of consecration. Consecrate yourselves to the Lord as mothers. Husbands, fathers, consecrate yourselves. Give yourselves over to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have some preparation to do. When everything goes back, quote, live, we got some work to do. Children, you're bored stiff. Prepare yourselves. You can prepare yourselves. You don't have to be spoon-fed everything. You've been trained. You've been prepared for such a time as this. Pay attention. The Lord bless you. Listen, if you've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, inbox me. Let me know. We want to pray with you. If you have any special prayer concerns, again, inbox New Life Church of God. Uh, we have a prayer ministry that will lift you up, that will pray for you, that will strengthen you indeed. So glad that you tuned in today. Next time, next Sunday, we're going to come back to you and we're going to encourage our students. This would be almost graduation time for many of our students. And so we want to give a special shout out to our students and to our graduates. That will spend be part of our time next Sunday as we'll come to you. But thanks for tuning in. We love you. We celebrate who you are. Enjoy the balance of the day. The simple things that COVID-19 established for us. Let's love the Lord our God with everything that we have. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. We'll see God work and move in powerful ways. God bless you. Until next time.